Jaya! The topic for this video is why you might feel confined or limited in your relationship and what to do about it. Yeah, relationships are beautiful, you know. They are such a powerful way of engaging into life and connecting and bonding. And um, they are also a very specific container, right? And so when two energy realities, two human beings come together, you and your lover or your partner, and then you start merging together, there is going to be an overlap, right? And there's a place where you match and then there is a place where you don't match or where there is some change there, where there is some adjustment to be made. And uh, usually if there is an overlap which is quite big, you know, then it's no problem. It's very easy to dive into it. If diving into this relationship requires lots of adjustment, lots of shifting of your mind, behavior, attitudes, perspectives, mindsets, you know, then it's going to be more challenging. It will require more sacrifices. And I don't know how you feel about the word sacrifice, but now my whole being was like, oh, you know, it feels like you have to give up something that is important to you. And so the, the first thing is finding a partner that is actually a potential match on different levels. And very often it's not about the physics, you know, it's not about the physical aspect of that person. It's much more about the energetics, about something much vaster going on. What needs to happen is that it needs to be an alignment of an energetic pathway between two souls, between two beings. It means that it needs to be an evolutionary match. That person that you are meeting must be an agent of your expansion. So you can look at relationships from a physical perspective, you know, really the worldly aspect. We couple, we make babies, all the practical stuff. And then you can look at it from the evolutionary perspective of your spirit from the deepest part of your being. On that part, on that essence, relationships are here to expand you. They are here to open new gateways in your being. And by bonding with somebody, you are going to create that expansion in your field. And so what happens if you meet somebody and in the process of being with that person, you feel like you are shrinking, you are becoming smaller, you are contracting, you are not expanding. Maybe it's because the expansion is somewhere else. Maybe the things that you used to do, you let them aside a little bit and then you start expanding in another direction. And that direction is valuable and precious as well. So that's one point. Now, what if that other direction is not a match for you? What if the other person, what the other person is suggesting is actually not in alignment with your truth. What are you going to do about it? You know, you can try to keep on modifying yourself or altering who you are to try to accommodate that person's agenda, or you can meet somewhere in the middle and connect from that place. Or you can be like, you know what, it's, it's just too difficult to make it match. It's just too challenging. So why don't we go separate ways? The reason why people break up, the reason why so many couples come to a point of dissolution is because relationships, the relationship they are in, has become too constricting. It means that there is not enough space, not enough spaciousness for that person's evolution to move forward. If the container was vast enough, there would be enough space for that evolution to happen. It's only because it's too constricting and too limiting that somebody has to move out of that container for the duration, for the, the evolution of that person to keep on going. And so suppose that you want to make it work like you have somebody with who you notice that there is a challenge there is a difference of views there is like you feel a little bit confined with the relationship 
But at the same time, you don't want to give it up. You feel like there is something really precious there and you work, want to work on it together. What can you do about it? The first step, the first step is to understand where your truth is. If you are an individual by yourself, without the influence of another person, is what is your match? What is your living match? Where are you going to be? How are you going to behave? What is the nature of your being, the core nature of your being? So this is your truth when you are by yourself. So try to identify that. Who are you deep inside? What is the thing? What are the things that really turn you on, that activate you in life, that bring you to a place of resonance? This is what you have to first identify. And then identify your partner's truth. Where are they at? What is it that they want? That they demand from you? What is it that they, where is their truth? Where is their true center? Their true alignment with their destiny? So this is going to bring clarity to the picture. And then, you know, you identify, if you notice that there is a good match, right? There is a, a good um, super imposition of your agendas, right? But then there is some parts that are, you know, that create a little bit of friction. So in those places that create friction, you must identify the places that are non-negotiable. It's like, for instance, you're a woman, you want a couple of nights out in a week with your girlfriends. It's simple. You want to have a social life with only women and your partner might freak out every time you go out with your friends. Okay, that's a possibility. That's an example that you might face in your life. So what you want to do is identify exactly the places or the areas of friction that are non-negotiable because some of those are going to be deal breakers or they might create tension and then you can still navigate them. If you start feeling really constricted or limited in your relationship, it probably means that you already stretched too far out of your truth. It probably means that you already went too far out of, your, out of what feels right to you. And so the way to get back in line with your truth is to start re-establishing the core things or the core values that really matter to you. In a way, those things that are non-negotiable is something that you have to impose or respect in yourself. If you start disrespecting these core values in your system, then what's going to happen is that you are going to start moving out of your truth, get more and more constricted, more and more contracted, more and more unhappy. And eventually you are going to lose track with who you are. And so the idea of relationships, you know, is to find a space which is expansive enough to embody or to embrace all the different aspects of the core values, the core behaviors, the core attitude the core truths that you need to have in your life to feel happy and fulfilled. And to do that, you have to know yourself. You have to identify exactly who you are and what are the core qualities that you want to have in your life. Once you do that and you realize there is friction, you identify the places that are non-negotiable and then you see if your partner can be a match with that. If you say, well, I want to go and travel to another country for three months and have a distance relationship with you, is your partner okay with that or not? And if this is your destiny line and your relationship is not expansive enough, is not spacious enough to contain that, then usually that can be a deal breaker. It can mean like, it's either I sacrifice that need or I go with it and that means a breakup. And sometimes, I agree, it's a hard call, but sometimes it's something necessary, something that you have to do. 
I hope this answers your question. I love you.